What's going on, yo? I didn't know y'all was here. What's well, good, yo? It's your boy Santo G. Back at it, you already know. Spreading unity, prosperity, and respect. But of all, if you're new here, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Tap that notification bell. That way you're notified when I drop future content. So today, I wanted to do a little different one. I wanted to give you guys an example of three different kinds of inmates and I also wanted to touch bases I found a little poetry journal that I had took notes on on videos that I wanted to touch on like just stuff that I wanted to put you guys up on game that way you guys know what time it is what type of mentality we have that way if you have a son you have a brother you have a sister a mom, a tia, a tio, whatever the situation is, man, you have somebody that's busted, that way it helps you understand them, their mannerisms, and where they're coming from, man, because a lot of these traumas that we deal with in there, we don't talk about, and a lot of times, people just be thinking like, man, they tripping, like we're tripping, it's kind of hard to understand someone if they're not opening up to you. You know what I'm saying? So, I wanted to just touch on a couple different key factors that come into play that make us who we are, make us develop these certain mannerisms, these certain characteristics that it's hard, man. It's hard to shake off. I'm not going to lie to you guys, man. It's hard to shake off. I'm barely now starting to be and feel like a normal individual in society, man. And it's already going to be almost four years. We're in 2024. I got out 2020. The beginning of 2020. Right before COVID. So I'm going on almost four years man. 2020 yes it's not that far. Like it seems like it was just yesterday. But it has been almost four years man. So salute. I appreciate everybody rocking with me man. Shout out my sponsor Killer Kush. If you guys want some bombs up, you guys want to go into the dispensaries, check out them on IG. If you guys want some bombs up delivered to you, get on my good people at Cali Herbs Los Angeles. Check them out on Instagram as well. And if you guys want a top of the line Frenchie, shots up to date, paperwork, everything. You don't want to risk getting robbed. Get on my good people at Frenchie Road Kennels. Get at them at their Instagram. That's Frenchie underscore row underscore kennels, man. So now let's get into this video. So what I mean by there's three different kinds of convicts is there's the homie that maybe was a fool on the streets. Maybe was not. As soon as he hits prison, they go Christian. They read the Bible and they go to church. And... I'm not saying it in a bad way, man. I'm just giving you guys the information. You got the homies that go Christian. You got the homies that just go in there. They program. They go out to yard. Working out. Just trying to get fit. They're just there. Go out to day room. But that's all. You know what I mean? They're not participating in anything. They're just there doing their time. Probably reading. And getting fit. You know what I mean? That. The ideal inmate that you want to be. You know what I'm saying? You want to just be reading. Getting your knowledge. Probably getting your college courses in. Or getting a vocational trade. Because they do offer a lot of vocational trades in there. Like plumbing. Electrician. Um, which one's another one? They had plumbing. They had electrician. They had masonry. They have a couple of other different ones. They even have inmate workers to wear... All the plumbing that gets done in there is all done by inmate plumbers. They only have like one from the street and he is, his job is to go in every day and train the inmates. Everything he knows, show them everything so that way whenever a toilet, a pipe or something breaks down, if they can, they're going to save money by sending the inmates to go fix it. Whenever they're building new buildings and stuff like that. They have inmates doing the masonry and all that. The concrete work, everything. 
So if you want to be one of them people to go in there and learn trades, learn vocations, I guarantee you every prison has their certain vocational classes and they do offer as far as classes for you to get your GED and if you want to pursue a degree, they have those as well. I know back then it was Coastline College, it was Coastline Community College. That's when I had signed up, it was Coastline, I don't know about now. But you have the inmate who is Christian, just doing his Bible thing, going to his little church groups and stuff like that. You have the one that's just reading, doing his college stuff, trying to learn as much as he can and working out. And then you have the ones that are in the mix, that are just right there trying to politic, more than likely are probably getting high. I'm not going to say everybody that's politicking is getting high, but more than likely it comes with it, man. You know what I mean? You out there dealing with all kinds of stuff, all kinds of headaches, you're more than likely going to blaze a drink. Or do a little caldiz or do a shot, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna lie. So, you have the homies that are politicking, the homies that are getting high. Oh, I'll say four. You know what I mean? I'll say four. I'll put that into its own category. The homies that are politicking and trying to make a name for themselves, trying to climb up the ladder, I would put them in their own. And then you got the homies that are just getting high, chasing, just depressed, just mad at the world just trying to drown themselves and just getting high man i'm not gonna lie man i've been i had the only one i never was was a christian home i'm not gonna lie i've never been the one to be like oh resort back to the bible you know what i mean and that was just because of me and the life that i was living you know what i mean at the time and that's why i seek refuge in my santa muerte you know what i'm saying and God bless her, man, because straight up, if you're going through some stings, right, where you're going to go out into the yard and you're potentially going to stab someone or they're potentially going to stab you, are you going to pray to God like, God, please, look, I'm about to go out there, I'm about to stab this person, but please don't let me get hurt, you know, it was just one of them, like, <clears throat> I've been through a gang of near-death near -death experiences to where... All it takes is getting hit in the wrong place, the neck, or getting hit in your lung or something, you know what I mean? That's all it takes. All these people that get stabbed 20, 30 times and they survive, man, they lucky, they blessed. You know what I'm saying? That's just my point of view. So now, I also wanted to just touch on a couple of things. One thing that's always high in a prison can switch from one second to the next is the tension. It could be as simple as somebody saying a word. Somebody bumping into somebody and then chaos starts. You know what I mean? Just because it's calm, certain prisons gone certain times without having any altercation, that doesn't mean that at any given moment something could happen, man. So, just wanted to, I can't stress that enough, man. You know what I mean? You youngsters, you guys think shit's a joke? It's not a joke, man. The manipulation factor, too. You guys need to learn. How to recognize when somebody is just using you and trying to manipulate you and then when someone's being genuine. You know what I mean? It's hard to tell. Especially when you're in a position. Like me, when I was in a position to where I had the building and stuff like that. You don't know how many people would come and try to bless me with all kinds of shit. Try to bless me with dope. Or try to bless me with the end of, Or just... Trying to be cool, but at the same time, they were trying to be cool just to see what information they could get from me. The whole time they was talking behind me. They was talking behind my back and plotting on me behind my back. You know what I'm saying? That type of stuff. To the point where I'm looking out, right? <clears throat> I already told you guys about the time when I was bringing in dope with the black. So, off that, off that alone, if... The other people on the table would have got mad and called up top and they did. They did. But say if I wouldn't have cleared it, me working with the black, right? Say if I wouldn't have cleared it and they would have got mad at me, they found out and they called up top and they let them know before I let them know, I would have, I would have been getting whacked. 
and off that yard. But because of the simple fact that I did it the right way, we called up top, cleared it with them, and before it was even done, had sent them a little blessing, talking about I sent my wife to go get a money order and send it to the bay. A blank money order, a specific number so they know who it's coming from, send it to one of the big homies books in the bay. And then on top of that, still ended up touching whoever the sec was with another 200, like here, boom. So by the time that they went and called, like, hey, he's doing this, this, and this with the blacks, I already, they already knew. The homies coming, plotting, I already knew he was just getting close, and I blessed all of them too, boom, blessed all of them. I didn't have to bless all of them with at least two grams, here, boom, 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 here's two grams, bam. That's for you and your people, you and your people, you and your people, you know what I'm saying? And they still ended up going and calling and ended up trying to get me moved on, you know what I'm saying? So, y'all better watch that. Don't let a smiling face fool you, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta always stay on your toes because remember, at the end of the day, when you're in there, it's not like if you and your hood dealing with your homeboys. You know what I'm saying? Even then, you gotta worry about it. But I feel like me being at home and with my homies, I can at least have more trust. Don't put that same trust in other motherfuckers that you don't even know. They're from other barrios. Remember, their job at the end of the day is to put in work and to make a name for their barrio, not for you or your barrio. That's just my point of view, man. Y'all need to learn how to distinguish who's really there and really trying to do it for the right reasons and who's trying to manipulate the situation and just get information or just manipulate, you know what I mean? Another one I wanted to talk about is there's a certain saying that you can only refuse one time. You can only refuse one time as far as say if they come and they ask you like, hey my boy, we need you to do us a favor. And you got a visit coming up or something, you know what I mean? You haven't seen your people. You tell them, hey, Spencer, like, I can't, you know what I mean? I got a visit coming up, like. So, boom. I say they come back again, like, hey, my boy, we need a favor, like, whoa, whoa. By that time, it's like, you know, ain't no, ain't no ifs, ands, or buts, like, you gotta do what you gotta do. Unless, unless you already, like, short, and you about to go home, and you already done did some shit, then you could speak up for yourself. Because they try to do that to me. You know what I mean? When I was in Sentinella, homie ended up coming, trying to get me to go do him a favor. And I told him, like, hey, Charles, like, I was doing 10 years. I already had seven years in at that time. I only had a year left. You gonna ask me on my last year? Like, Charles, homie, straight up. But just because I was red flagged, because of me getting high and my drug use and my addiction, they were trying to use that against me. So the first time I told them Charlie's, I like, nah, they came again, sat me down, they're like, hey, you know you can only say no once, right? And I looked at them straight in the eyes and I told them, like, look, homie, you tell whoever you need to tell for that I said Charlie's, dog, straight up. You know what I mean? I know I have a problem, like, as far as my addiction and the red flag and all that, I understand that. But that don't have nothing to do with me already being ready to go home and... I've been down seven years, I've done this, this, and that, done pegadas, done boobops, I've done everything, you name it. So, it's not that I'm scared, it's just, no, homie. You have all these lifers, all these people with double digits, time that can do that. Why are you gonna come and try to fuck up what I got going on, like, Charlie, homie? And they tried to scare me, but me holding it down and telling them, like, Charlie, Go relay everything I just told you, homie. Go tell them up top. And I guarantee you they're going to be like, Charlie, leave the homie alone. And that's what happened. You know what I mean? So, another one that I have put is, don't touch anything that isn't yours. I've been through lockdowns to where we go on lockdown for three to six months. And say somebody left their soap dish and clothes in the shower. We're in ourselves six months. We come up. After those six months, everything is still there. Whatever you left, it's still there. That's one thing. Don't touch anything that isn't yours. 
If it's not yours, don't touch it. It don't matter if somebody left it there. I guarantee you, they're going to retrace their steps and they'll come back for it. Unless you know whose it is, just take it to them. But as far as, oh, somebody left this here, don't ever do that, man. Straight up, don't ever do that. Straight up. You don't know if they marked it, if they have a little mark on it or something. And if they see it on you, homie, I best believe you're going to boop, pow, 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 pow. That's going to cause something because they're going to think that you stole it without knowing they forgot it somewhere and you just picked it up. So just don't touch anything that isn't yours. Now, if you ever find yourself in a cell and your water's not working, say in the morning, say you wake up like four, five, six in the morning and your toilet's not flushing, your water's not working, make sure you put everything up. Make sure you put up, if you have any contraband, anything that you don't want the COs to find or take from you, make sure you put it up and be ready for a raid. Because if your water's off in the morning, that means that from 4 to 6 in the morning, they're going to come hit. That They always do it in the morning, from 4 to 6. And if you ever do pick up one of these, if you ever pick up a phone, like as far as if you buy a phone, and you used to be a phone monster on that payphone, still use the payphone. Probably not as much as you would normally, but still use the payphone, like every morning and every night. Don't just quit cold turkey because they're going to know something's up. Like, hold on, homie used to be on the phone all day, every day. Now he's not on the phone. So, still use the phone, you know what I mean? Continue your program, cut down because I know the bill's a lot. And if you just got a phone, you ain't got it like that. But still, try to make some phone calls here and there, man. Don't just quit cold turkey. They're going to know something's up. Also, watch what you say on them phones. If you think they're not listening, they listening, man. And that's why you got to say your name and all that. Like, they got ways to where they could go back and listen to all your phone calls. I'm telling you this from experience. They done used my phone calls against me and against my BM before. Where she got busted and did a whole case. So I'm telling you from experience, man, they listen to phone calls. Y'all be careful what y'all say. Also, if you guys are getting high, bud, drinking, whatever, just know that they do random drug tests. Every prison does random drug tests, so just be aware of that. If you smoking or you get high or something, make sure you drink a lot of water and flush. Because if you drink a lot of water to the point where your piss is clear, you could go piss for them and you'll come out clean. It'll be inconclusive. Your piss will be too watered down that it'll be inconclusive. Just flush. I've done that a lot of times. It does work. As long as you drink a lot of water, and I mean a lot, talking about you gotta piss like three, four times before you go piss for them, and it'll work. They'll probably want to piss you, piss test you again though. Because it's going to be so inconclusive that they're going to double back and hit you with another bottle. So be ready for the bottle. Okay. I already talked about no jumping cars. You know what I mean? If you're a south side, ride south side all the way. If you're white, ride white all the way. You're an other, ride other all the way. Don't jump cars. That is a big no-no, man. A big no-no. So. Also. If you guys get busted. Don't talk to no inmates about your case. Beware of inmate CIs. I can't stress this enough. That's why I keep bringing this up. And also. If you get busted and the cops are trying to tell you. Your homeboy told on you. Don't get mad. And then go and tell on him homie. That's some bitch shit. And they're lying to you because they didn't tell on you. They're going to say that they told on you that they have this, they have that, they don't have shit. That's why they're questioning you. So just plead the fit, wait to your lawyer, and that's the best advice I could give you. It's your boy Santo G. I wanted to make a little longer one. This one is three different kinds, well four different kinds of inmates. And... 
pretty much little tips of how to maneuver in the system and what to watch out for. Shout out Kill the Kush. If you guys want to check them out, check them out on Instagram. They have their locations in their bio. Big shout out to my boy Cali Herbs. I'm about to smoke this fat daddy right now after this video. A little wake and bake. Get at my boy Cali Herbs Los Angeles on Instagram. That's Cali Herbs Official. Or if you guys want a uh, top of the line Frenchie, shots up today, paperwork. Get at my good people at Frenchie Row Kennels. Get at them on Instagram. That's Frenchie underscore row underscore kennels. And they're going to get you right. Let them know Santo G sent you, man. And they're going to give you a discount. I appreciate you guys, man. Unity, prosperity, and respect. Above all, it's a Santo G production. Let's get it.